YouTube, Danger83 back again for uh, another video. It's um, not a boot sale pickup. There's a couple of items from the boot sale, but mainly my finds are off Spock and through a contact who I bought stuff off Gumtree in the past. So uh, it's not going to be a usual boot sale pickup. So there is a bit more retro quality stuff, I suppose, uh, as it's very hard to find at the boot sale. Not that we don't find it, but uh, this is more stuff that I've been able to sort through. Boot sales got rained off the weekend, um, not for the one to try, me and my mate Liam went out again. Didn't go to the ones that we've been to in the previous week before, we tried some different ones. Basically we tried five car boots yesterday on Sunday and we picked up nothing. Only thing we got, no nothing, nothing, we didn't get nothing. And a couple of my other pickups are from a retro gaming shop, not here in Dudley, although we do have two here in Dudley. Uh, me and Liam drove over to Birmingham after getting fed up and not getting nothing from the boot sales and thought we'd try out this gaming shop and uh, I'll show you what I picked up from there. So first off, uh, I'll show you my two boot sale finds from Saturday. I mean, the weather was miserable Saturday as well. I spent a grand total of £2.50 and that was over two car boot sales. All I got from the one car boot sale was uh, I went to the toilet and I tried in some dog mess. That was all I got from the one car boot sale, which was a joy. Um, I pick, did pick up this book, Gears of War 2. It's really nice. I'm going to try and get better at holding stuff so you can actually see. And as you can see, I paid 50p for this. I think it's just like a strategy guide, but it's a really nice hardback version. So yeah, that was 50p. That was from uh, Saturday. And I got this little Mario car. Let's see if I can put it without the glare. It's not actually that nice today. It is still humid but uh, the weather's miserable. It's been raining. It says £4. The latest I could have it for 2 It's still sealed. Little Mario Kart. I believe it's one of the variants from the the Mario DS uh, game. So yeah that was all I got from the boot sale really. Um, then I've, I've got a connection who I spoke to on Gumtree. I bought a load of NES stuff off him in the past in one of my previous videos. And he's dropped me a message a couple of weeks ago saying, look, I've got loads of stuff to sell. Um, I'll drop you a message with what I've got. And to be fair, I don't pester him. I'll just message him this weekend because I haven't been to the booters. Uh, I said, look, what you got for sale? How much do you want for it, etc. And he sent me pictures of what I wanted. And as usual, I, I asked how much he wanted for the lot. And it was a bit more than I wanted to pay because there was a lot of sports titles in there. And I weren't arsy with him. I just said... To be honest, often the sports target tools are just worth the value of the case. And I wasn't prepared to pay that much. And they said, well, I'll accept this. And it was still a bit too steep for me. So I just went through and picked through the games that I knew I wanted. Um, a couple I think I've already got, but for the price he charged me, it was worth getting. Because obviously, as you know, I'm going to be selling at Revival. Makes me a bit of a lizard, I suppose. But uh, well, I'll see it is. At least if I pick it up, I'm, I'm going to keep that money in the hobby. I know I'll say that all the while. That's why I don't leave stuff behind at the booters that I know that I can turn over because I'd rather I make that money and put it back into hobby than just a general reseller. And I know Kevin Wolford123, I hope I've got your name right Kev, um, he had a bit of issue, he's done a video recently that he's took down with someone who just basically goes around his local buy and sells and just buys everything regardless. Now. I hate that at the boot sale when I see someone just getting everything knowing they're going to sell it for 100%. Like they're not even keeping any of it. Um, the reason for that, guys like myself who I see around the boot is who collect and we often speak to each other, show each other what we got, have a bit of banter saying how lucky you am you've got it. And I've got no problem with them. And I know some of them are like me. They pick it up to, um, you know, obviously move some on, trade it. But the majority they keep, which is, which is pretty cool. But I hate people who just buy 100% to make a living out of. Even, I don't mind so much the people you can probably tell it who do it for a living. Like, there's a guy called uh, Nick Hills who picks stuff up. He's got a web, um, a Facebook, a YouTube and Facebook page, should I say. And he does it purely for profit, but he does it a legit way. He plays tax on it, whereas my local lot seem to be doing it as well as signing on, you know what I mean? And, and, and that does get on my nose a bit because, you know. I, I pay more taxes and everything and these lot of people seem to be just trying to make a quick book without doing it the legit way. So anyway, forgetting about that, I'll show you what I picked up off this guy. I paid £35 for the whole lot 
Um, I don't know whether it's that, that's a bit too steep. I don't think it's like completely retail price, but um, yeah, 35 quid. I was happy with what I got it anyway because it's a lot of titles I haven't got and I don't see at the boot sales. Or if I do see at the boot sales, I'm not prepared to pay it on something that I can't say, look, you've sold me this and it don't work. Whereas with this guy, we've got a bit of a rapport now. Uh, first one on the. P I'll do all my PS1s first, I picked up him. First one's Crash Team Racing. You might say, see that set is free in the corner. He actually uh, gave me that because he, it's not got the cover. It's just got the manual and the game, obviously. So he threw that in for nothing. Uh, all the rest are boxed complete. There's a couple of cracks on the cases, which I'll swap out. They've all got the manuals and the games are in nice condition. Asteroids. I know I picked up uh, Missile Command in my last video. I do like collecting the older games that have been revamped for the systems. I'm not sure if I've got this. Uh, but yeah, it was in part of the deal. So, Gex, Deep Undercover Gecko. I never played this back in the day. And it never really interested me. But I picked it up because I never ever see it at the boot sale. Doom. Now I know I've got this, but I've got the Platinum Edition. I'll probably be better if I show it you the right way up. The joys of shooting videos in one take. But yeah, I've got the Platinum Edition and we all know how anal I am a bit with that. And this is the double... Like, you know, your classic jewel case. So, this is cracked, so I shall swap that with, I don't know, my Venga Boys CD or something. Um, one of these was part of the... Originally, he was going to charge me 25 quid for everything, and then he chucked in another game that I know is 20 quid on eBay, and he said, okay, for 10 It's not this one, it's the one after this one. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Again, in really nice condition, this box, to be fair. It's just a tiny, tiny crack in it there, but I am not going to moan about that. And then there was Street Fighter Alpha, Warrior's Dreams. This is the one he wanted a tenner for in with part of the bundle. So it was all for 35 quid altogether. And I was happy with that again, nice condition. And as Tootie noticed recently, you got the numbers on the side. This is 199, so just spotted him doing that in his last video. Uh, next to the PlayStation 2 titles. Uh, yeah, I think this is all of Final Fantasy X. It is a reprinted cover, which I couldn't tell when he sent me the pictures. But the game's original, it's not a copy. So I will probably do my own version of a cover or try and pick up a cover. Rip somewhere. Um, although it's a platinum case, it's not a platinum game inside. Final Fantasy X2. I'm sure I picked this up recently. I'm, I'm not too sure, I just, you know. I offered to take them all off him and in the end I just went through the titles that I knew I needed or I knew it would be easy to trade on. Final Fantasy X12 I think this is. I don't know, these numbers confuse me with the X's and the numbers and everything. And Dragon Ball Z Badoke or something like that. Now I've got three Dragon Ball Z games for the PS2 and I'm not sure if there's more than that because I thought this was one of the ones I got but I think there's a different series of this with a word beginning with T on the end, so oh, I'm not too sure. I shall double check it on my list. And finally, in that pickup, two mass system games to Changar. Still got the little tabby things at the top. All boxed and complete. Nice condition cards. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusades. And Heavyweight Champ. As I say, it's just a sports style, but it's mass system and I ain't got it, so. So that was that deal, yeah, um, I paid 35 quid for that. I might play pretty close to retail on that, I'm not too sure, but he's a, he's a good guy. I know, he, I know he doesn't set me up with no duffers, if I, I can say that. My next two pickups are going to be from Spock. We all know the issues I've had with Spock in the past, but I finally tried to give it another go, to be fair. And I picked up two bundles. Um... And one was listed as in Albury and one was listed as in Smevik. And when I got there and put in the postcode from one address to the other, there was literally 0.3 miles away, so it worked out quite handy. Like, literally, it was a drive down the road, turn left, and I was there. So the first one I picked up is a Master System 2. It's got all the wires and that. They're all over there. We don't need to see the wires. A uh, little bit of dust, genuine dust, like, you know, when it's been kept in a loft or anything. Seems in nice condition. I will test it. I mean, I'll just go with my pile of other Mega Drives that I'm going to move on. Because I did just buy this for the games that was with it. 
Uh, two controllers. They seem in nice condition. One's got a bit of a, a loose pad. I think it might be that one. But there's no chewed up wires. No showing other wires or nothing. So I was pretty pleased with them. And the three games. Two of which I definitely wanted. And um, one I wasn't that bothered about. But I will keep it because it's the American version. Uh, first one is the classic collection with Gunstar Heroes. Altered Beast. Flicky and Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Kingdom. Next one, this is one I'm not that bothered about, but um, it is the US version, it's the Genesis version, it's Super WrestleMania. I don't believe there's any variance in the characters, if I'm wrong, please tell me. Ross will keep it anyway because it's a it's an American one, so it'll just go in my collection, even though I've got the PAL version. And this is the American version of Toxic Crusaders. Both the last two are just carts only. Well, I used to love Toxic Crusade as the cartoon as a kid, and I wouldn't mind getting the uh, the B movies that were released. Obviously, before that, the Toxic Avenger, if I could get them on DVD for a reasonable price. So I paid twenty five quid for that lot. As I say, I should probably just move on the Mega Drive, and I'm one hundred percent keeping the three games. And the other bundle I picked up down the road, I paid a tenner for all these games. Now there's only two of them that's got manuals; all the rest are just boxes and carts. Coincidentally, that lady who sold me the Mega Drive, she's got loads of NES stuff for sale, but it's proper top end price. But I did ask her if she decided to split any of the games, she can me, and she did say she's got some more stuff like that. So it's nice to make contacts with people because she said they'll message you direct once they know you're a trusty person who turns up and pays you money. They will message you direct, and it's a good way of getting contacts to get stuff. So, anyway, these are a tenner. I think there's only the top two that I needed, all the rest will be being moved on. And, and they're not special titles, they're average titles that I just didn't have in my collection for one reason. First one's NHL 95. I used to love the hockey games on the Mega Drive, so that will definitely be being kept. And Lotus Turbo Challenge. As I say, this one here, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Cart only, and I think all the rest are cart only. But you know, £10 for, how many was it? nine games like just over a pound each i'm not gonna moan um super wrestlemania the pal version which i've already got i've got all the wrestling games on the mega drive so i love wwe world cup italia 90. looks a bit water damaged but it doesn't when you look closer it doesn't i think it's just a crease here mega games one which i've got FIFA, again it looks like it might have had a cup of tea somewhere near it at some point. I think this one might have the manual actually. Feel, yeah, yeah it, has. it feels like it got the weight of the manual in there. You know, but you're not going to fetch a lot for this. You'll just, I'll probably put for a sale for a couple of quid at the market or so. Same with this one, double header. I know I've already got another copy of this. And then a couple of nicer titles. Not, not a rare one, this one, Sonic 2. Got no manual. Again, it's probably just something I'll move on for cheap at the market, but I won't be doing that till late in the day because I know the other traders will be coming around buying it off me to sell it to you guys who've come later for a dear price. So if you come around the market and I've got it marked up, have a chat with me because, like, you know, them prices are just to put people off buying it off me and then giving it so on their stall, that'll annoy me, whereas I'd rather cut someone a deal, you know what I mean? And Sonic 3, which I know is a better end priced game. Probably worth more than what I paid for the bundle, to be fair. And say, so, no manual, but the carts are all in really nice condition. So, I've got that complete, so they'll be being moved on again. And finally, it's from the trip where me and Liam went over to Entertainment World. It's in, I want to say it's Sheldon. Sheldon in Birmingham. So, if you ever get a chance, pop over. The guy who runs it wasn't there, but his mum was there. And another guy who helps out. Really sound, got tons and tons of stuff. It's easily the biggest uh, retro gaming store locally around here I've been to. If there's others, hopefully I'll get to visit them at some point. Really nice set out. A lot of the stuff's priced up, and I noticed this more st some of the more expensive stuff wasn't. Obviously because they probably didn't want to lose out. They do check eBay prices, but they do check the sold listings, which is good, not the bite now. And they do knock a few quid off. So, um, funnily enough, the three things I was asking for, they hadn't got. Which I know one was um, the disc for the GameCube Game Boy Advance player, they ain't got that. And got a copy of Psycho Fox. 
an Aunt Courier Crisis on the PS1. It's not even a rare title. It's just, I used to love that. It's the bloke on the mountain bike who goes around doing jobs. It's brilliant. I used to love it. But I did pick up two things from there. Both PC Engine games. Um, one was, um, I was going to say cart only then, so it, it's card only. And one was box complete. Um, first one was Chase HQ. If you know you've seen these before, all that calls Hue cards. How this technology did not kick off, I do not know, because this is a brilliant way to have games. I'd even go as far as say it's better than CDs. Obviously, you're limited what you can put on them, but obviously, in modern days, I'd have thought this would be a better way to make games. Absolutely brilliant, really cool to collect. Chase HQ, I love that game. And the next one I didn't even know was out on the PC Engine. This is Box and Complete, and it's Space Invaders. I haven't had a chance to fire them up yet. I'll just open the case and show you There's the cart. And that one was £12. So I spent £18 in the shop, to be fair. Uh, as I say, it was a great shop. Just asked them to open up any of the cupboards, and they'd let you have a look through. Uh, my mate left his contact details because they sell toys as well and his friends into collecting Ghostbusters toys uh, and he's into a bit of Warhammer and they've got all that sort of stuff so they'll be getting in touch with him about that. Uh, they've got loads of PC Engine games but the trouble is with the PC Engine with it all being written in Japanese and as you can see from the back there's no display of what the game is so I was stood there on my phone because I know there's some brilliant shoot 'em ups on it hoping I'd find it some but they haven't got none. And as I say some stuff was uh, as you're expecting in um, one of these shops really close to retail but uh, I uh, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed having a look through, we was probably there for the best part of 40 minutes an hour and then went to a rubbish car boot on the way back which I paid 30 feet to get into but that's beside the point uh, and I should go over again, I probably won't go over again for another 2-3 months but now that first visit's out of the way and you've got to have a bit of a chat it's good like and as you said like if you come over next time and you want more and you bundle it up together you'll get more of a discount which is really cool as I say that's Entertainment World Sheldon Birmingham if you ever get a chance to visit um, and all I want to do now is uh, just talk about a few channel room updates whatever you want to call them this could be doing behind me for a start I've never showed you a lot in here actually, I'm going to show you now, but this is this is my Shane. Look at that in there, you got me Spectrums, there's two Spectrums in there, two Commodore 64s, there's two Amstrad CPCs over there, and the old Philips video pack, and a Sony Trinitron, which I picked up for £3, well I think it's on the blink, I picked it up for £3 from a Vuta. I had it working and now I can't, so anyway that, that might be going. Because after a bit of a chat with uh, Gus Newton when he was recently on about um, the B&O TVs, I've managed to get someone down to what 40 quid they wanted. They wanted originally 70 on Spock, but I ain't paying that for an old telly. I don't care if it was like three and a half grand back in 2000 and whatever they bought it. I'm going down to 40 quid and I'm happy to pay that. So that could be going there, which means in future videos I'll be moving my camera angle a bit and. Where you can see Wiz and Liz on my new modern telly there for the Mega Drive. I always love this. I remember seeing it on Games Master as one of the challenges. Great game. Anyway, they won't be being showed there anymore. They'll be being shown behind me. So I should probably move my camera more straight on, if you know what I mean. But I'm waiting for the person to get back to me. I'll confirm the price. It's just a case of picking it up. And this week's a bit of a rush because I'm off on a stag do the weekend. So there won't be no booting. Even my level of sadness is I'm not going to be booting on a stag do because my head's not going to be allow, able to allow me and the other thing is I'll just uh, oh, I've got a cabinet that I'm going to display my Game, Boy, uh, Game Boys in it when I fix the walls, just like a thin glass cabinet I'll put my Game Boys in it, I'll work out something that will look good and next time I do a room tour I'll point it out the other thing is I just wanted to talk about a couple of videos that have come out recently I briefly touched on the one by um, Kevin Wolford123. I always think about that. That's a really simple name, uh, Yeah, he got a bit of heat about slating someone who bought loads locally on his buy and sells and that, even though they're based miles away and stuff like that, and literally just generally buying everything and not giving other collectors a chance to buy it. And I think he got pointed out because in other videos he pointed out that he was selling stuff. But I could see his argument in a way that she was just buying it to sell 100% of it. And 
I've noticed in groups when I post my pictures and my pickups, everyone will go, how much is this, how much is that? And I understand people want to get stuff, but I'd say like 90% of things I pick up weekly, I keep. It's like that odd 10%. Now that odd 10% is a massive pile in my corner now. Because it's underneath everything up my one corner, which I hide when I do my room tours. That's why I'm having a stall at Revival. It's not because I'm a hypocrite and I don't think, you know, there is no collector on YouTube, on Facebook, anywhere in the world who collects, who hasn't got stuff that isn't a double or they've bought stuff knowing they didn't want 90% of it to move, to move it on because they wanted that 10% of stuff, if you know what I mean. Like at the boot sale it's different when you see stuff you can pick and choose, but when you're buying stuff off of Gumtree, or like I did last August, I went to a, in Dudley there was an auction, I think I've mentioned it before. And I won 14 boxes of, uh, it was a, just retro gaming stuff, basically it was a shop, a storage loft, a bit like Storage Wars. They'd come into this, um, like, storeroom or store place that was just full of retro gaming stuff, because a shop in Dudley must have gone bump, I don't know how many years ago, and now it was just like they haven't paid the rent or something. Or, I don't know how, but anyway, this auction never sold retro gaming stuff, so everything was no reserves. And there was, one lot was 14 boxes, it was listed as PC accessories. Now, if you were bidding online, you wouldn't have bid, on, bid on it, but because I went to the viewing and so did it. I mean, this is how I know Nick Hilton, who I class as a good friend now. Me and him were bidding against each other on this one lot. And I, I promise you now, Nick, that was my last bid. If you'd have bid again, you'd have won this lot. But it was listed as 14 boxes of PC accessories, but it wasn't. In this box of PC accessories was my Turbo Duo that I've got. Right? And if I can just clip it open, my PC engine with CD ROM 2. Now they were in there, and what I paid for that lot was worth these two alone. But I got then had another 14 boxes which were listed as um, PC accessories, they weren't. Uh, there were controllers basically. Uh, I mean, I've got all the different coloured N64 controllers which I'm keeping for myself. They were in that lot. I wouldn't have got them if it wasn't for winning that lot. But it means I've got like 13 boxes worth of stuff I didn't really want, but I was happy to pay that to get what I wanted. So now, underneath my bed lives boxes and boxes of controllers, which is why I'm having a stall at Revival because once I clear that stuff out, I, could, I can have more stuff to display in my room. It's like I've got two game cubes over the side that I don't need. I've got my one that I want over there, but I bought them game cubes for the games with them. So I'll probably cover what I paid for that game cube when I took a risk of it on the boot sale when I sell it. But I should probably then go and buy some more games with it. That, that I think that's what Kev's argument is: is is when you've got people like us who buy it and resell it to fellow gamers. One, we're probably going to cut you a deal because we're going to stand there for 10 minutes and have a bit of a banter, so I'm going to cut you a good price. Or I know yeah, and I know you're looking for summer and we do some sort of trade. His argument was is that person never has any interest in keeping any of the games, and I can understand that. And I think he'll agree, he went a bit too far by naming that person in the video, which he probably done that video in the heat of the moment of doing it, and looking back, he probably shouldn't have named that person, understandably that you know, if you're part of that Facebook group where the old going over, you knew who it was anyway. I'm banned from that group personally, so I'm not that bothered. I, I'm not that bothered about getting back in that group either, but that's another story altogether. Um, and the other thing was, um, Top Hat Gamer did a video recently about not being bothered to go to charity shops and um, car boot sales. And I'm very clear that Top Hat Gamer's character on YouTube, it's not like us who do it like this, like me, this is me, I'm Dana, go under the name of Dana Straight Free, because eight years ago when I made my YouTube account, Hulk Hogan had probably just made his comeback, and I thought it was really cool to call myself the Dane Stay, you know what I mean? And I'm stuck with that now, that was a life choice that I'm stuck with. Um, but yeah, it's me, whereas he's very much a character like the angry video game nerd is. So I do take, when he does a video, very much tongue in cheek, and he was saying it's not really worth going to charity shops and boot sales. Um, Whereas you only need to search around, especially the UK collectors, it still is. Tootie, every week, finds something worth getting out of bed for. Um, as do others, um, Kevin Wood Wolford um, picked up a NES with a load of games this weekend. 
Uh, what you've got to be prepared to do is do the leg work. Like, I mean, I went out this weekend completely enough to waste the time. The best thing that come out of it is me and my mate had a bit of banter driving around. But if you do put in the leg work, it is worth it. And as I say, I'm not having a pop at him. He's a much bigger YouTuber than me. I wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. But uh, if anyone watched that video and took it deadly serious, I wouldn't. Boot sales are worth doing. And Retro Collect recently uh, posted an article on their site, and I love Retro Collect, and it was saying all the days of finding gems at the boot sale. Time gone by. Um, and if you're going to turn up at 8 o'clock, yeah, they are. But if you're willing to turn up there, be the first there, put up with a bit of hustle and bustle, and have a bit of luck, you will still find stuff. And I enjoy it. I'll get the buzz out of getting up on a Saturday and Sunday morning if I ain't got work. And knowing I could go to the boot sale and find something that I ain't seen before. I could walk around and see 100 copies of FIFA 08 again. I'm thinking of buying them all actually, to be fair, to get the Monopoly on them on eBay. I'm going to buy all the copies of FIFA 08, that's my money making scheme of the future. But in all seriousness, there is still stuff out there, but, but you've got to be committed. You've, you've got to be prepared to go out like I did this weekend and get nothing. If you're not committed and you can't get out of bed early, you're not going to find nothing, nothing and he is right in that aspect. And I say them with just a couple of things I don't normally talk about other YouTube channels and what they're doing. I just wanted to talk about them a couple of things because I had an opinion on them really and I probably will have more opinions as I get more confident on YouTube. But that's it for today really. I've done my pickups, had my little bit of a say. I'll show you all my uh, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles t-shirt with the dog on. It's like a promo t-shirt. I am running low on t-shirts so you might start seeing some really dull t-shirts soon until I pick up some more. Uh, won't be no video from next weekend unless I manage to do a let's play at some point this week. Uh, one of me having a blast games. So until then, have a good one. See you on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And try off now.